Good evening, everyone, uh, and welcome back to the Wine Investigator's Wines by Grape series. We're going to be tackling all the major grapes and uh, familiarizing ourselves with them. It makes a huge difference at the wine store. You can buy with greater confidence. So we're going to be looking at Pinot Noir tonight, one of the, of course, uh, major uh, red wine varietals internationally. First uh, cultivated in Burgundy, uh, primarily in the northern part of the Côte d'Or. It's uh, an interesting kind of grape. It's very thin-skinned. It ripens early. It uh, is picked a little bit later. So it, it, uh, it has a bumpy ride along the way sometimes. You can imagine with hail or sunburn or pests or standing water, there's a lot of possible challenges, plus the grapes are awfully close together on the vine. So Burgundy is the, uh, the birthplace of the grape, and it's a, an ancient and prolific grape. Much like uh, the uh, tortoise from the Galapagos, it uh, has sired a number of other grapes, if by accident, by wind, with Gouet Blanc, Pinot Gris, Chardonnay, Pinot Meunier, who's its uh, faithful friend in the making of Champagne. Um, Pinot Noir, however, is grown internationally now. California, New Zealand, Switzerland, all over the place. But uh, besides Burgundy, my favorite uh, Pinots are from Oregon. The, uh, the Erie Pinots, uh, David Lett was the first to plant in Oregon in 1965. Panther Creek, Adelsheim. I think the, the cooler climate, the proximity of the Pacific really makes uh, Willamette Valley Pinots uh, shine. But Burgundy is their ancestral home, and while well, quality can vary hugely, even within one vineyard, depending on who the owner and winemaker are, there are some extraordinary uh, Pinots to be had in Burgundy, uh, if not pricey. Um, you probably, uh, for everyday drinking, not find yourself wanting to purchase above the Bourgogne or village level. One fun uh, sort of anapoetic uh, way that I uh, remember the uh, the northern villages of the Côte d'Or, which they call the Côte de Nuit, is uh, to think about the 2013 year old man who once said, you know, words signify what they are. So if you think about Chambon Moussigny, you think about elegance and finesse and a little bit lightness. If you think about Moray saint you think of elegance and power. If you think of Gevry Chambertin, you think about powerful reds. If you think about Von Ramenet, you think about earthy and powerful reds. So that's always been my kind of uh, cheat sheet. The nice thing about Pinot is that outside of France, it always says what it is, so that's not too complicated. Um, but it's a, it's a fantastic, uh, expressive grape. Um, Jancis Robinson, the wonderful English wine writer, referred to it as the liquid chicken because uh, so much depends on where it's grown, how it's grown, who's doing the growing, and how it's treated after the picking. So we're going to try a uh, German Pinot Noir this evening. Uh, Robert Parker famously, let's see if I can find this quote, described German Pinot Noir in 2002 as a grotesque and ghastly wine that tastes akin to a defective, sweet, faded, diluted red burgundy from an incompetent producer. I've never been the biggest fan of uh, Mr. Parker's brewingness, nor his impact on the way people think they should talk about wine. But this is kind of funny to read, given uh, the strides in German Pinot Noir making. And also, uh, Pinot Noir in Alsace is great, light Pinot Noir. You're not going to get the intensity and concentration of Von Ramenet or a Ken Wright Pinot Noir, but, you know, of course you're not. It's a different... Uh, Kettle of fish, so to speak. So this is a Pinot Noir from Villa Wolf. It's been around since 1756. 
but in 1996, the Dr. Lozen winemaking family uh, took over this property in the Falls and are really making a number of lovely wines, including everyday Pinot Noirs, or what they call Spatburgunder. So give this guy a little, little sniff. A little taste. You're actually supposed to sniff it longer, but that's fine. Uh, in the nose, uh, you're getting uh, sort of underripe cherry and strawberry, tarragon, a little bit of dill, and certainly a whiff of uh, mushroomy earthiness. On the palate, more herbal notes, sage, tarragon, just really bay leaf, it's really rich, even though it's a lighter style of pinot, and certainly almost a ripe cherry going on when you actually taste it. So uh, that's uh, Pinot Noir. This is the Wine Investigators. I'm Mark Gallagher. It's always uh, a pleasure to speak with y'all. Have a great night. Good night.